Okay, so uh, the next presentation uh, will be a presentation by uh, Buteina Bukalfa uh, from uh, Kaldimera University uh, from uh, Algeria. And uh, she will be presenting about boredom and creation of meaning in literature class. Um, because uh, she has, uh, uh, she is doing her PhD in comparative uh, literature, and uh, she is enroll, uh, enrolled in the Department of Letters and Languages in Algeria. And the main focus of her research is post-colonial trauma in Francophone and Anglophone women's writing. Uh, and uh, she is passionate about teaching literature, and her topic uh, is boredom and the creation of meaning in the literature uh, classroom, and this is based on her own uh, observation as part-time teacher in of uh, literature. So, uh, Butena, the floor is yours. My presentation today is going to be entitled "Boredom and the Creation of Meaning Through Narratives uh, in Literature Classroom." Uh, I will be following this outline. Uh, first, I will provide a somewhat general overview of boredom. Second, I will be discussing the experience of boredom in the EFL classroom setting, more specifically in literature classroom among uh, university students. Uh, then I will, uh, I will be moving to the third point, which is uh, coping with boredom in education setting. And mainly, I will explain how boredom can shift from being a negative experience to a positive stimulus and would help students create meaning with the help of the three uh, narratives. <clears throat> uh, boredom across the different uh, literature has been variously described as a feeling, uh, an emotion, an effect, a state, a drive, or a negative psychological experience. Uh, in his classic uh, essay entitled The Psychology of Boredom, Otto uh, Pinichu defined boredom as an unpleasurable experience of lack of desire. Uh, in the same way, the psycho psychoanalyst uh, Adam Phillips uh, defined boredom as a state of uh, suspended animation in which things are started and nothing begins, uh, the mood of diffused restlessness which contains that most absurd and paradoxical wish, the wish for desire. Similarly, uh, the wish for desire is a not to uh, Tolstoy double definition of boredom, which is a desire for desires. Uh, so, um, boredom here <coughs> is understood in terms of lack of desire, uh, which can be the first clue uh, to boredom's special ability to initiate meaning making. Uh, overall, uh, boredom uh, is seen as a negative experience rather than a simple, uh, than simply a relaxed uh, experience. It can be mild uh, or unpleasant to actually uh, painful. So individuals who uh, experience boredom uh, have difficulties paying attention, uh, difficulties concentrating, and effort is required to uh, maintain focus uh, on what is going on. Uh, in order to distinguish uh, the complexities of boredom, uh, researchers differentiated uh, between indigenous uh, boredom and reactive boredom. Uh, endogenous uh, boredom would be uh, boredom generated from uh, within the individual. Um, the learner uh, represses his or her desires out of anxiety or depression, uh, while a reactive boredom would be boredom in reaction to what is going on uh, on the environment. So here it's external based on the external factors. Uh, the learner does not meet the expectation from the exterior uh, world. Uh, for example, in a classroom setting, this can be obvious uh, when some students may look as if they are dozing, uh, while others uh, may be wiggling in their um, seats. Uh, boredom can also be referred to as a more of a situation-specific feature uh, that characterizes the individual. Uh, so we have uh, state boredom and trait boredom. Uh, state boredom is temporary condition that results from the learner's perception of their learning uh, environment that is not sufficiently stimulating. Um, this type of boredom uh, can be experienced, for instance, in a um, uh, 
uh, when the teacher uh, when the teacher's uh, methods are repetitive uh, and unchallenging or the selected tasks by the teacher do not meet the student's expectation or fail to simulate uh, their interest. Uh, but this type of boredom is reversible uh, and can work to students' advantages because it has the potential of motivating them to search for new goals and alternative solutions. Uh, while for the trade boredom uh, is associated to uh, it's associated with boredom uh, proneness. Uh, and it refers to individuals uh, who are extremely susceptible to experiences this negative emotion. Uh, here, boredom here uh, seems to be inherent part of their uh, of the individual uh, personality. Uh, if we project uh, everything, uh, all what has been said in the learning environment, uh, Gail Macklem. Uh, named the academic emotion of boredom, where he argues uh, that uh, this is a common experience uh, experience emotion uh, among students in the learning environment. Um, but actually, uh, academic uh, boredom is not an emotion to which teachers have uh, paid much attention. Certainly, they knew that students can be bored during the classroom. Uh, but uh, this was generally attributed to laziness, uh, students' anxiety, uh, or personality uh, traits. So boredom within the learning env environment is related to decreased motivation to perform, uh, decreased likelihood of making any effort cognitively, and this would result in uh, reduced self-regulated learning and uh, decreased achievement. Uh, Within the classroom setting, uh, setting uh, boredom experience involves some combination of disengagement, dissatisfaction, uh, inattention, and altered time perception. And also boredom has been described as uh, the silent emotion uh, as compared to anger, for example, because uh, it does not disturb or uh, disrupt uh, the classroom. Uh, with that being said, when it comes to literature classroom, uh, two questions are raised. Uh, what is causing students boredom in the literature classroom? And uh, can academic boredom be a positive and a creative experience? Uh, prior to starting the module of literature, students link literature with the task of reading thick volumes and canons. Um, as a consequence of this belief, uh, they don't generate pleasure and therefore they fail to see purpose uh, in the learning endeavor. Uh, they are less likely to make um, any effort. So literature here is associated with frustration uh, and failure and reading long passages from narratives becomes meaningless. Uh, board students stop trying, uh, withdraw effort and make also experience uh, and may also experience a uh, high uh, fear of failure. So in general, students have uh, the most negative feelings toward literature as compared to um, other modules. Also, an, uh, an important point to, take, to be taken into consideration is the cultural dimension when it comes to examining boredom. Um, how students experience boredom depends on culturally endorsed uh, view, views of emotion in general and of boredom in uh, particular. Uh, in classroom setting, uh, teachers whose idea of which activities are or are not boring is based on their own beliefs, uh, perception, sentiments, and assumptions rather than um, uh, on their students' opinions and preferences. Uh, so students are bored when they have little control over uh, activities. Uh, so boredom is uh, in uh, highly constrained environments that can cause can be the reason that they have little control over uh, activities. Uh, but uh, control is not a direct cause of boredom. Uh, however, uh, it is a significant uh, moderator. Successfully address the causes of boredom in literature and come up with uh, ideas to cope with it, it is necessary to take into account the type of proposed activities. Uh, for example, instead of asking the students to 
um, summarize a novel, the teacher can ask them to make a play uh, out of it or um, ask them what they have understood uh, instead. Uh, the learning environment is also crucial to take into consideration and students' expectations, abilities, and preferences. Uh, for example, the teacher uh, can even uh, arrange a class in which boredom would be openly discussed uh, rather than treating this condition as a, a taboo topic. Uh, also, uh, training students in boredom-focused mindfulness, uh, which would enable them to uh, accept temporary uh, lack of simulation and better understand their own feelings and needs, so they can generate a meaning out of um, narrative. And this would allow them to attend to activities with more intentionality, uh, equanimity, perseverance, and engagement. Uh, an important recommendation is that the teacher uh, should give students choices connected with who they will work with or uh, what uh, topics they will uh, be discussing. Uh, and this would um, make students uh, feel more in control of the learning process and as a result more motivated to be part of the literary activities uh, and persist in the tasks they are um, assigned. Um, thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, I was. Uh, I, I just want to uh, add a few points uh, that were not mentioned in the presentation. Uh, when I was a part-time teacher uh, at the university, um, what I have noticed is uh, that students they link boredom to reading. So the reading that was the problem. And uh, well, first of all, I cannot blame uh, the the students. Um, for, finding, for, for finding it difficult or challenging to read because, uh, first of all, it's an EFL uh, learning environment and English uh, is um, a third language here in Algeria. Uh, so reading demands energy, motivation to read uh, and reading silently can be a little bit um, burdensome. Uh, what I have did is uh, uh, after suffering, uh, suffering several uh, disappointments in trying to discuss um, classwork uh, of literature that the students had not read, uh, I decided to, to resolve this problem by uh, reading the material with the students and um, making it an oral interpretation of uh, what was the topic, which is uh, Dead Man's Path by uh, Chinua Achibi. And this uh, has um, resulted in an excitement in students and um, uh, em emphasizing on reading out loud uh, instead of uh, the printed pa uh, papers uh, changed dramatically and they were more uh, enthusiastic and they showed interest, especially when uh, they tried to interpret and create meaning out, out of narratives. And they were also um, allowed to link uh, their uh, personal life some, somehow to uh, the, the main characters because they were embodying the characters and trying to uh, act uh, from the perspective of the character. So uh, I, I have noticed that um, they showed um, interest and they showed uh, motivation uh, in uh, doing so instead of just uh, reading uh, from uh, the novel. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention, and once again, I apologize for uh, the internet uh, cuts. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, the technical problems uh, once yeah. again, uh, but maybe we will manage to discuss. Uh, maybe we have questions. So maybe I, I, I start. Oh, Keith. You maybe you can start. Um, yeah, so I, I just like to, yeah, so I, I can apologize as well because my internet collapsed as well. So it just happens on online forums sometimes. Um, I just really liked uh, if you could sort of say maybe a little bit more. You described boredom as a silent emotion, and I, I really like that. One one of the things I found in my PhD was was that was a, a really relevant phrase. It was a lovely phrase. I wish I'd heard it a while ago and I could have pitched it. It's a really relevant phrase. In particular, 
in terms of some of the girls that I interviewed because their their displays of boredom, their experiences mm -hmm. of boredom were very passive and, and very silent. And mm -hmm. so I wonder if you could maybe say a little bit more about uh, boredom in terms of being a silent emotion or if it was linked to any particular types of people or mm -hmm. anything like that. I'd be really interested in that. Thanks. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you for uh, this interesting um, comment or question. Uh, what I have noticed in the classroom is uh, why I've called it the silent um, emotion is because, for, for instance, in anger or frustration, you can see the uh, facial expressions, you can see um, the physical, uh, uh, the physical um, reactions, while in silent emotion, as uh, scientists uh, have referred to, um, is it doesn't show. You cannot see. You cannot notice it unless you really uh, go into um, uh, into your students. Uh, how do we say the term? Um, interest and ask them uh, personally or uh, or direct questions to know what's the source of their boredom. Because unless you do so, you cannot uh, know and you cannot. Um, uh, understand whether it's boredom or something else. That's why it's it's uh, it's be, it has been described as maybe um, the silent emotion because you cannot uh, easily uh, detect it. That's the term I was looking for. Did you did you do your sorry did you, sorry I've just talked it again. Is that all right? <laughs> did did, uh, did you do your research within your with your own students? Um, yes, it's ma uh, it's basically uh, based on uh, observation, uh, as I have mentioned before. Uh, it's just observation with my students because the main interest of my research is actually a comparative literature, which is something uh, very different. And I have a chapter uh, which links trauma to uh, boredom, and uh, from this uh, from this uh, concept, I, I I was intrigued and I wanted to. Uh, uh, do this little experiment with my students because uh, in Algeria they don't they don't show interest in literature they don't show interest in reading as well mm. so I, I wanted to know why is it because of uh, the cultural background or is it because of uh, general boredom because uh, when it comes to boredom um, I don't see a, uh, a differentiation of uh, westerner or non-westerner because it's a concept that apply to all and we all get bored uh, so from this concept, I wanted to um, to know what's uh, what is the cause of boredom and why uh, students are uh, specifically bored in literature um, classrooms. Okay. Did you sorry? Did you um, with the silent boredom? Did you notice any difference between uh, males and females? Um, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, what I've noticed is that uh, males, they tend to be more silent. They tend to be more at the back and uh, they don't show interest. They don't show um, any expressions, any facial expressions, uh, while the females, they were the active ones. They were the ones that were eager to know. Uh, right. okay. Yeah, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Uh... Josefa uh, wrote the, the questions. Okay. Maybe you want to uh, pose them in a voice. Uh, I was wondering about the result of your presentation. Uh, I think she, she's reading them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> no, no, uh, Josefa asked, is it, uh, is it not uh, indigenous boredom uh, reactive? And uh, is it boredom as a trait uh, reversible? Uh, uh, trait uh, boredom, I think it's more innate, mm, more uh, within the character, within within the personality. So it it um, it requires more attention, more uh, what I would call maybe professional help that goes beyond the tutor or the educator uh, hands. While the reversible one. Uh, it can be reversible because it's based on the environment, on the um, uh, on the classroom. Let's say here we have the classroom environment, so it's based on the external world. So if we change the external world, if we change the teacher's attitude towards students, if we change um, the students' toward uh, attitude, sorry, towards uh, books and literature in general, this may be um, reversible. 
hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, uh, which kind of, uh, of professional help, for example? Uh, sorry? Which kind of, of uh, professional help with, with um, maybe uh, maybe if it's if it's uh, in the personality maybe it's a trait of personality this maybe need like uh, a help of a psychologist or psychiatrist to uh, disentangle the boredom the source of boredom because as I as I, as I said maybe it's um, I read uh, actually in a research that boredom is uh, somewhat caused by uh, trauma it can be a result of trauma so if it's a result from trauma or uh, an abusive uh, environment or is it because of um, uh, things that the teacher or the educator cannot uh, control they cannot have a hold a grip on this maybe needs like further help and professional ha help from psychologists or uh, psychiatrists mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you uh, yeah, you know, be, uh, your uh, subject is uh, highly important because not uh, even at schools, but maybe on a higher level. Uh, yeah, at the university, we probably all have some, sometimes some problems uh, with our students to read uh, and be not bored by it, the text uh, from the syllabus. Uh, and I understand this uh, feeling for Bourdieu, but uh, for Giddens, I, I cannot. So, so this is the, the very painful issue. And we have, uh, and we have. This was a comment, of course. Uh, and uh, we have also one more question from Anna. Um, all right, so it, it's, thank you for the presentation. It's not a very academic question. I would like to follow up on what uh, Mariusz has just mentioned. Uh, so uh, I was uh, a bit surprised uh, to, uh, to find out that literature is the most boring of the modules because I am a literature teacher myself. I mean, I, as an academic, I mostly teach American literature. Mm -hmm. And uh, the responses that we get uh, as literature teachers are not that bad. Uh, so uh, my question is, what other modules was literature contrasted with? Um, was it culture or maths or? Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for your um, question. Uh, here, I, I would like answer you uh, from a cultural uh, point of view. Uh, as I said earlier, um, in Algeria, they were uh, students uh, both in higher education and uh, in education in general. Uh, they are not much exposed to reading, the act of reading, right? And especially here, we have uh, English as a third language. So uh, reading literature um, comes uh, at once. And when they are uh, confronted with uh, long passages, for example, or short stories or books, uh, they are a little bit surprised and um, uh, bored at the idea of reading, especially with uh, the age of technology right now where we have that every kid and every student, uh, they're always on their phones. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. Sitting down and uh, uh, going down the act of reading is a little bit uh, bored to them. And they showed interest, uh, for example, in oral presentations, in uh, cultural mo modules, in civilization, in history, where uh, there is something going on. They showed real interest and they were not bored. Uh, while in literary studies where the, they have, because they had this idea that uh, literature is only reading long passages and uh, ancient um, literary text. But when they were uh, confronted with um, uh, interpretation and uh, they can um, interpret texts based on their knowledge, based on their ground, based on their cultural background, and there is no such thing as wrong or right, here they started to uh, to be more open to the idea of literature and uh, reading um, books. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes. I think that what you what you mentioned is very important that they find it relevant and meaningful and somehow linked to their own experience. This is right. crucial. Right. And it's true. Also, uh, I I mean, in Poland, students. Uh, well, they are used to reading, but uh, I have been a teacher for the last 10 years at a university and I have noticed that um, 
uh, their ability to re read 500 page novels uh, well has has declined so it, right. there is this change that you mentioned with the phones and technology that uh, they, they do not have an attention that uh, is standard uh, would enable them to read uh, a long Henry James novel so what we what I give them are short stories instead mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that's um, yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.